Um, I've always thought that Mateo's name is the coolest name, so it was never it was never an issue. Um, maybe ask Mateo that. <laughs> okay, was it weird being called someone else? <laughs> Hearing your brother called your name the whole thing. To me, it was just, it was just a uh, it was a bit difficult on set. Other than that, I loved it. You know what I'm saying? I thought it was a, a cool choice. I, I, I think it's the most special name. Like I'm tired of being called Carlos and 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 Jose and you know just this very stereotypical. Uh, Spanish names. I think that Mateo and I mean, uh, yeah, I, I Carly I, was pretty cool too. Come Carly, on, that's yeah, funny. Well, I love Carly, Carly. Carly, but Carly's genius. <laughs> well, this is such an incredible movie that Eric and Esteban wrote. Was there something about the script that drew you both to it, or did one of you get pitched it first? So, um, you, you want me to get the background one? So, it actually it started as a short film initially. I don't know if you if you know. Uh, Blast Beat started as a short because Moises did a film called The Kings of Summer, which uh, went to Sundance. Um, and uh, in the scene, there's a scene in the movie where Moises speaks Spanish. His character Biagio has a scene where he speaks Spanish. One scene, and Esteban and Eric one day were watching The Kings of Summer, and that scene came on, and they were like, oh my God, this dude's Colombian. You know, obviously the Colombian accent, if you're Colombian, you immediately can, you know, you pick can pick it up. It's cap, yeah, you, you can pick it up. So they were like, wow, who's this dude? They just recently found that he had a brother. They were like, wow, these dudes are Colombian. We should write a story for them. And so we got an email from our agent one day. They're like, yo, there's a short film that came in for you guys to play Colombian. At that time, we neither of us had- We had never been part of a short film and we had never been part of a project that was you know, being led by Colombians or a Colombian story. So that immediately for both of us was captivating. We were like, yeah. Fully, fully game. And, and and the best case scenario for the short was to go to festivals, and we were lucky enough to to uh, go to a few, a premiere at a few, and Mateo and I went to a couple. Um, and you know, from from there it was sort of seeing and 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 hearing from Mateo and Eric when or how or what was the progress in terms of creating the feature. And I'd say about two, maybe three years after. Um, the short was completed is when uh, they got the green light to make the, the feature. And, you know, it felt a lot like deja vu and reshooting a lot of the scenes and, and, and a lot of the same energy. Um, but there was also additions to, to the feature that weren't in the, in the, in the short, like, like actors that um, I couldn't have imagined uh, would be a part of, of this story and, 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 and the act the, the acts with Mateo and 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 uh, Dr. Onitsuka, which is Daniel Day, and I never had a chance to work with him, but at Sundance, I really understood um, this man's presence and 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 his ability. Is he's a very captivating person. So, uh, you know, Wilmer, Diane, um, you know, uh, the locals in Atlanta. Um, it, it it was a really beautiful process, and to 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 see the film uh, at Sundance together was really special. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. I mean, however, you know, this is, you know, a metalhead science prodigy. You guys had to have to have done some research into this particular, you know, space and science in general, just to formulate your mind around this character. I mean, talk about the process you went through to prepare for the role. For sure. Mo where Moises is, funny enough, this is awesome. Where Moises is right now in this interview, in that room, I had about four or five lectures with a physicist to explain to me what basically Carly was talking about in the film in the pitch. He has a scene where he's pitching this idea to Daniel Day Kim's character. And he walked me through the exact science of everything that I was talking about because it was very difficult terminology that took me a second to wrap my head around. Um, and in that room, is it, Moises is like in a, in a school, basically our friends started a school and it's that room. Um, I had, uh, yeah, I had those classes. That was part of the preparation, listening to, you know, a playlist that Esteban shared with me with heavy death metal, heavy metal, you know, a bunch of different types of uh, metal that I had to, one, memorize for certain scenes, and then just to vibe on and to fully captivate or to, to capture what Carly's vibe uh, really was, you know. So I think the musical element and, yeah, that honestly, the scientific element really kind of there was a clear direction of what, what I needed to do in preparation for, for Carly's character and um, luckily us already being Colombian there wasn't much we had to look into to like you know 
how Colombians speak or, you know, we were lucky enough to have that come very naturally and to be able to finally showcase that because it's so close and dear to us. And it's just what we are. You know, we speak Spanish to our parents at home. We've always spoke Spanish. And then between Moy and I, we speak to each other in English. But even though our dominant tongue is English, our first language was Spanish and specifically Colombian Spanish, you know, which is, is very special that we were able to finally, you know, on a Hollywood scale show and, and create a film like this. Moises, talk about then the inner conflict that Mateo is going through this. He, you know, it's struggling. He's, you know, struggling to come to terms with this American dream and getting situated with a new life here. What's going through his mind and really how is he coping or not coping with this new life? Yeah, I think the most difficult part as, as me, um, to understand the character was uh, accepting the fact that he's 16, 17 years old, you know, I'm not a teenager anymore. Um, so it was tough to sort of get back into, into the mentality and promote the mentality of immaturity and reactiveness. Um, so, you know, I would ask Eddie uh, and, and Esteban, I'd be like, yo, why did he choose to do this? Why is he doing this? And, um, you know, it, uh, it definitely was the most difficult part about um, being on set, trying to um, yeah, make these scenes feel like two brothers are arguing over something that, uh, that, that, that only teenagers would argue about. Yeah, it was tough, it was tough. Mateo is a hard-headed, um, teenager he's he's just in his rebellious state and and um yeah i i'm quite opposite i i'm quite reserved i'm quite uh observant and i think that he's just going into stuff head first um yeah the scenes where you mateo are with daniel are some of my favorites the pitch scene that you mentioned earlier really okay. stood out to me what was some of your favorite moments from filming either on screen or off? Fantastic question. Um, those scenes were very special because like Moisha says, I have, uh, I have an incredible respect for Daniel Day, Daniel Day King. So when, you know, being on set with him, like Moisha was saying, he's such a presence and he was so prepared and so, uh, just someone that I looked up to and you know what I'm saying in that moment specifically just capturing his aura and being in his presence you're just like okay wow this is serious and he really put me into a certain mentality like he really did feel like a professor you know he was so because the way he on oh, the way he speaks and the way he presents himself it's like yo this he is this character you know so in that moment it was extremely special for me and easy for me to tap into into that although there were some of the most difficult scenes that also is the most memorable scene for me because we only had like two hours left of the day to shoot and we had to wrap and we hadn't even started getting my coverage on this insane monologue that I have to pitch <laughs> to Onitsuka. So um, yeah, it was definitely, the difficulty is also why it's so memorable to me personally. That was a very special moment. Uh, we have scenes with Diane that are very, and Wilmer as well, you know, the family um, scenes for me with Callie that also were extremely memorable because we were just like running around. Our first day of shooting ever was just me and Cali running around Bogota shooting, you know, uh, uh, VHS footage. You know, that was like the first thing we shot at all. That was before we, we even started officially shooting the film. So uh, there's not one single most memorable. There was just like a lot of different, very um, iconic moments for me personally that I was just like, I'm never going to forget this moments with Esteban and Eric that just like, you know, that brought us closer shooting at certain colleges in, in Georgia where me, I was born in Atlanta, um, grew up in Georgia. So just Thank kind you. of being at home, you know, it was just, uh, yeah, it's a really beautiful experience, but a lot of memorable moments. Why says it must have been hard for you to shake off a long day of filming, having to be in a completely different mindset from who you are as an actual person. How did you shake off a long day of filming? No, I mean, you know, you accept that as an actor. I, I've gotten much deeper into a role before, like same deal in Colombia for Monos. Um, that was the most 
difficult thing I've ever done. Um, so, I mean, it comes with, with, with the career, I guess, like you're going to be, you know, if you're lucky, you're going to play the full spectrum of characters. That's the antagonist, the, 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 the psychopath, and then the virtuoso, the, the scholar. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely open to all that. It's just tough to be, uh, to, to, to shoot a film, a short film, and then re shoot the same, uh, sort of iconic moments with a first act and a third act. Um, that's, that's how this felt. And, you know, six years ago I was 21. So shooting the film at 26 was uh it was just like gosh i need to take i need to strip 12 13 years out of my <laughs> yeah, right. experience you know be this ignorant sort of uh reactionary or reactive but also reactive. playful you know because mateo is also playful no well yeah youthful comes with that ignorance comes with with that you're you're definitely right uh, just really quickly mateo what do you hope viewers take away from last beat and really take to heart from watching this film I really hope they just take, they walk away with an, a different and an accurate representation of Colombian culture, you know, of not what we've, we've been, uh, we've been shown, you know, in the last decade or so, you know, where Colombia has become a lot more popular, um, but mostly it's because of Pablo and shows like Narcos, which is like, you know, that's one reality of what has happened, but it's by no means the only reality nor the most beautiful you know what i'm saying there's a lot more a lot more dimensions a lot more beauty to colombia and i think uh for me i'm just hoping people take away a different perspective of colombian culture a different perspective of the immigrant experience um and that hopefully people uh empathize with these characters and this experience and the journey that a lot of people you know obviously this one's a very specific one but there are a lot of people who have experienced this and have gone through what these characters go through. And so I hope, you know, people just walk away with whatever they walk away with, but I hope they just feel and get to experience the soul of, you know, of the story, I guess.